Welcome everyone to one of our weekly security debriefings here on our channel. Just yesterday it came out that Andreas Freund and then others have discovered a backdoor, what appears to be one of the largest efforts, multi-year efforts, what looks to be most likely even either sophisticated hobbyist or more likely state actor. Uh, I think one of those China, Russia, USA or stuff, right? Details, who knows, right? What is behind this name? A multi-year attempt to systematically undermine Secure Shell, SSH, Open SSH, the Open Secure Shell implementation used by all experts to Secure Shell through the world into their systems, whether that's data center, work or at home and everything embedded in between. So let's take a look at all those absolutely mind-blowing details. And uh, by the way, um, it was discovered despite being a multi-year effort. The good news is most systems are most likely not affected yet because it accidentally was discovered relatively early and it only targeted RPM and Debian-based systems, so systems like our own uh, T2 are thankfully unaffected and we did most likely not ship unless there are more backdoors but the main backdoor discovered yesterday or the last days is not part of many systems including Arch Gen 2 and even with the affected systems of Debian, Red Hat and SUSE it was not rolled out in stable long-term releases so the only systems affected are unstable in testing and whatnot, right? Um, but if you run any of those systems, update immediately and most likely better reinstall this because most likely you cannot be sure who logged into one of those potentially affected systems. So what happened? Um, Andreas Freund has discovered by totally pure chance and accident that uh, some login was a little bit slower than usual, right? So after uh, observing a few odd systems, uh, symptoms around lib, LZMA, part of the XZ package and Debian Z installation over the last weeks, logins with Secure Shell, taking a lot of CPU and variant errors. So it's also, also a reminder always to be careful. Um, we also found, uh, for example, a 2000% better FS regression recently, uh, last year or so. And also, we, even live here on this channel, often take a look at source code and divid and I often shout out complexities and not the most, most amazing code. Remember the Intel Thunderbolt, where we have hundreds of comments of I should not be so critical with this. This exactly happens if you are not reviewing code and you're not reviewing critical. And this stuff here was done very smartly. So what uh, was done? One portion, so they discovered um, that this was compromised, right? Um, at, although at first they thought it's some compromised Debian package. Um, or whatever, but turns out it is upstream, right? So it was not compromised in Debian, but upstream. So upstream themselves. So either someone logged in there in the upstream servers, or more likely because it looks to be a multi-year effort to establish that. Uh, most people currently expect the upstream developer um, being compromised uh, himself and has done that intentionally. So much to open source and a thousand eyes reviewing that stuff, right? This is lesson learned. We need to review even more like we do here on this channel and others obviously do, as the only substitute for testing is more testing and for code review, more code review. So one portion of this backdoor is solely in the distri upstream distributions source tables, um, for example here as used in Debian. So we most likely, it looks, did not use exactly that because we by pure chance and accident used the GitHub auto-exported table, but more for that more, right? So, only if you used their specifically packed tarball, the backdoor, most of the backdoor was included there. So they injected and released intentionally an obfuscated script that was not even version, right? So while some parts of the backdoor are in the Git repository and created over years in the source, the main part was only part of their manually crafted release tables and so what they've done there is the script is executed um, like this additionally backdoor code there in that you only got if you build from their handcrafted 
source tables. And so that was using test data. So they, over the last years, added new tests. And so some of this test turned out, so much to testing and continuous integration testing and test suite. So they added a couple of test suites, but like ba basically BAT3 corrupted LSM, LZMA2 archives here. And they use an extremely obfuscated script here, um, ending here with SED, RPERS and stuff, TR and, and cryptic stuff. Remember when I often say here on this channel, like, dude, that is so cursed and, and cryptic. It's like, yeah, that's what you get. Like if, if you already normal build sources are cursed and crypt and like hard to read and follow, it's like, yeah, it's like, and then you don't even notice, like between all the cryptic stuff that's all usually going on there, where I often debug like half an hour, how the stuff even supposed to build and work. It's like, yeah, other people intentionally put their backdoor in, right? So what turns out leaving out all the stuff like also like bash pipe, this produces hello and stuff, evil grab, um, if test, config status and stuff, source series and export. So here they are doing head dash C. So head is a Unix program to print the heading of a file here for like first 1024 lines um, and other stuff like 2048 lines and so on, right? And other stuff here with more head and stuff. So they specifically craft a test suit data that if concatenated in very specific ways resulted in this backdoor payload, right? Um, here with exit, decompress and stuff, like maybe that was a compressed data that they decompress you or whatever. Oh no, that, that is another thing. So here they decompress you, good large compressing and concatenate stuff out of there and, and eval that. And, and then tail, like the last 31,000 lines of, and then substituting here, like translating five and so on. Very sophisticated, um, creatively sophisticated payload data, right? You, like how to hide payload data, like in binary corrupted binary data that you need to specifically craft together and, and, and decompress and stuff to even have this. So the, the finder of this has included the deobfuscated data in this injected text. So this file then contains a bulk of exploits that are, so again, if you, most of this like if you build from the sources, the main backdoor, unless there are others that now needs to be researched, but the primary now discovered backdoor only is built into your lib xz and lib z, uh, lzma. If you build from this snowflake manually released additionally source ball data, right? So, source table data. So subsequently the injected code um, then um, is injected there, included in the build. Um, so also this, so the, the thing is, um, I, I should point this out later, but the, the thing is I can't now even cl click on this. So GitHub has taken down this repository, which in my opinion is not the best thing, because now if I click on this, it's like this repository has been disabled as of last night, which in my opinion is not a very good move from GitHub. I understand their intention is they want to um, avoid spreading this, but the problem is now, other people who want to research and compare data, like I, like I nearly wanted to go live last midnight, but I thought like, do I'm overworked enough and tired and whatnot. And ah, let's do tomorrow. So now it's tomorrow. If I have had done the live stream last night, I could have shown you all the data. Obviously I didn't expect I need to crawl and back up all this stuff, but now I can't like, in my opinion, that's not, not the right thing. I understand the intention, but the code was already out there shipped by Debian and, and, and Fedora or Red Hat Rawhide or whatnot. So it, it was shipped and other people who want to re you review the stuff now, like I can't review it now, right? Um, that is uh, not how, uh, with all the intentions, this is not how it should be done. Um, because now I can't show you what was committed upstream there initially adding that in whatever date and stuff. But many of these commits were over many years and um, since the maintainer has taken this over. Um, so subsequently is injected code. Um, so what happened then is that this, this is linked, this binary object data is linked into the ex executable and it's, it's only done, they explicitly test there, which I can't show you now there because thanks GitHub for taking this down. But 
They tested there for Red Hat and Debian and x86. So you were only affected on Red Hat and Debian based systems on x86-64 if you were running ARM, PowerPC, MIPS, RISC-V. And that is why diversity, I always shout this out here, monoculture, right? Diversity, diversity. If the whole, whole world is running on Windows, then 90% of the systems are affected, right? If, if we would have a market share of 90% Reddit and Debian, then no, 90% of the Reddit and Debian systems would be affected, right? So um, diversity and uh, no monoculture, right? We need a mix of all of BSD and Linux. And uh, then if there is some security foobar, foo then um, at least not 90% of the monoculture infrastructure is affected. Um, so how is this? So this is all in an archiver compressor library, right? So how does this lead to a secure shell open SSH as, as secure shell daemon backdoor? So now it turns out not upstream. So this is where other distributions like our T2 Linux are not affected because and upstream also not. Like if you download open SSH from OpenBSD website portable proper, you are also still not affected. Affected are only systems like Debian and Red Hat, who did the not very clever thing of modifying and patching OpenSSH with systemd notification, something that our AAA T2 Linux also doesn't run by default, right? We're not shipping for good reason systemd, um, despite all the hype train, um, I'm not hyped on systemd. And so by patching, they patch like by other Linux distribution, modifying the secure shell daemon linking to a libsystemd and libsystemd usually for also not the best reasons linking with libLZMA they pull in this backdoor so it turns out what this backdoor does so this is how only on those systems they hook into intentionally hook into open SSH so this is why this looks like a multi-year effort this person has taken over maintenance of XSET some year ago, a little bit over a year ago, I think in 2022, we will see this in a minute. And they have systematically shown they have done some other things. So they have apparently done some random stuff here and there and hidden all those backdoors over years. This is why it looks very suspiciously to a very sophisticated operation, maybe not even by one person. So maybe this person who took over maintenance and did all this might not be one person. It might even be a whole team working together because this obviously was very cleverly orchestrated over a very long period of time. Um, so subsequently the injected code um, causes even vagrant errors. So even people worked on like, hey, now we get some vagrant errors, like what's even going on there? So people even worked on fixing vagrant. Vagrant is previous videos, videos on our channel, right? It's a sophisticated memory analysis tool. And so people even noticed vagrant errors and did not even immediately, immediately realize that it's a backdoor, right? So they only raised like, like, dude, wait a second, we now get some random vagrant errors, what's going on here? And they even worked together and with the author, I can't even show this here because thanks GitHub for taking it down. Um, so they worked even on fixing vagrant errors. And I think I have that here, probably I have your multiple things now to go on further because it turns out that, um, the the authors here very annoyingly appears the authors and which there is some other name in there it might even be that this other name which uh, we might have here this was was it Hans Werner or whatever um, Hans uh, Jansen it is not even clear that the thing right you cannot trust some random names it is possible because here for example um, other people advocated for updating packages in Debian and, and Red Hat, right? Like, hey, we need to get this um, updates in there because important. So it looks like the team of those people, which may or may not be one person, but most likely be one team, some most likely state actor, many people speculation because again, that is a very sophisticated setup, right? even pushed off like, hey, we urgently need to get improvements in there because, so what they did here is in the latest release of 5.6.1, they further refined this backdoor, this payload 
to not cause vagrant er errors, right? So this is how sophisticated this was done. Um, cause vagrant errors and crashes in some configurations due to stack layout differencing from what the backdoor was expecting. So the, they even further polished this in this version. So attempts were further made to work around this in the latest release of Fig 5.6.1, which I cannot show you because things get up for taking this repository down, for which the exploit was then even further adjusted, right? So it's not an accident, right? I mean, obviously nobody is crafting here this like affected systems. So again, as I mentioned, attached the obfuscated script. And again, we can't be sure that this is all, right? So not only we need to double down on reviewing stuff, like I've done this always for years on this channel, I've done this all my life, and this is a reminder, I have not even done this enough, right? And ironically, I've diffed often even Firefox, because so I didn't see a need of like diffing this library. But what I usually have done is, I mean, not only we recurrently work here with diffing the loose kernel and going over changes, but I've done this multiple times, even live here, diffing Firefox. And the problem with that is where I would also argue our systems are way too complex, right? I, with our Linux, I, for decades, for 25 years, try to keep everything as simple as possible for such good reasons. And that is the same for Firefox, because in my opinion, and I said this multiple times here on this channel, the changes in Firefox are just way too many, right? Because when we diff a major version of just some four or six weeks, there are hundreds of thousands of changes. I think once it were like 600 thousand changes um, in some tens thousands of files. And that is simply unreviewable, right? Because not even I alone cannot review it. Like I would, in my opinion, they should less randomly change stuff. I understand it's a huge browser. It has many features. It is very sophisticated and stuff needs to be changed. But I would argue stuff simply needs to be way simpler because even if I would have a team, like even a team at Red Hat and SUSE or Canonical or Google and, and Facebook, reviewing Firefox 122 to 123 and 600,000 changes in like 10,000 lines of, sure, you can review that at GitHub and stuff, but at the end of the day, you also need to review it as a whole um, also to make sure that nothing else then reviewed, like you, you can also not review like 10,000 changes on, on GitHub anyway. So in my opinion, software needs to be very simpler, which is why we are not shipping systemd and why we are not patching OpenSSH. And this is why keeping everything as stupid and minimalist simple. So as I said, they test here for RPM and Debian, right? Um, needs to be x86 because obviously this payload is x86, so they can only target x86. If you would link this in an ARM, you would even get errors. So they, not only would it not work, it would even cause linker errors because you can't link in an ARM64 and an x86-64 binary. So obviously it would not not work. They, they can't, like if they would not mask that here, they would risk immediate discovery because then people in the Debian and Red Hat server build infrastructure, they would immediately be tripped off like, hey, why is there some random binary blob trying to link into our ARM build, right? So further, it needs to be GCC uh, being used for whatever reasons. Um, and again, um, Debian or RPM and x86. So this is why most distributions were not affected and even Red Hat and Debian were lucky that they didn't ship it widely yet. However, you should double check and if if you have an affected system, you most likely should reinstall it and um, also revoke any keys and other data that could be at risk there and someone could potentially have logged in there, right? So what else do we have here? So luckily, um, those have not yet been widely used and integrated. Um, they, and they only use, so the, and the, the end of the story is this backdoor was only noticed because one random person noticed like similar to us co constantly noticing random things, including a 2000% better FS regression recently, because one person, one lucky person noticed and became suspicious that his secure shell login became so much slower, right? Usually it locks in instantly and, and it's like, and then like for, for probably a week or so, it sounds it's like, like, dude, why is my secure shell login now always so slow? And wait a second, um, I recently had this Vigrant error and like with, with strange database based stuff. So, Again, as I said, OpenSSL, open, uh, OpenSSH does not directly use slip LZMA. However, Debian and several other distributions patch OpenSSH to support systemd notifications. So 
lesson from the story maybe don't custom patch stuff to like pull in like all dependencies and libraries possible in your system and have the smallest possible trusted code base right um so initially so this worked observe the requirements for this exploit term environment variable is not set arc v needs to be most likely be user has been SSH, so if you have SSH somewhere else, you may or may not be affected. LD debug, LD profile are not set, so this payload, and that is of course, if you develop a backdoor payload over years, then of course you have some experience, right? Like why do they do this? So that if you debug stuff, you don't see it anymore, right? So this is why LD debug, LD profile are not so they, they basically put in some efforts to mask and hide this as much as possible so people do not need notice that instantly. Lang apparently needs to be set. Some debugging environments like RR appear to be detected and plain GDB appears to be detected in some situations uh, but maybe not others. Reproducing outside system D, uh, you can start with a clear environment and setting only the required variables like env, i, lang, en and stuff and cz. In fact, OpenSSH does not need to be started as a server op to observe the slowdown about half a second on some older system. And so analyzing the injected code, um, so they point out they are not a primary security researcher but discovered all the stuff nonetheless, nor a reverse engineer. So so it's just a high level overview. Analyze this primary on using perf record that observe the execution differences. Um, analyze this um, diverges between a backdoor and active or not and GDB setting breakpoints before uh, there. So the backdoor initially intercepts execution by replacing the ifunc resolvers CRC32 resolve and CRC64 um, for CRC code checking, um, which calls get CPU ID even and uh, injecting the code which previously would just have been static inline function. Then in 5.6.1 with that release a backdoor was further obfuscated removing symbol names. These functions get resolved during startup because secure shell is built with um, set no. Leading to all symbols being resolved early and then the use various uh, information of data from the dynamic linker program organs and so on and um, if so all those checks uh, fa uh, match it appears to be that this function then at the end um, hooks gets called the audit system and so on so until RSA public decrypt to be resolved when called with that symbol the backdoor changes the value of RSA public decrypt PLT to point to its own code um, most likely matching some of uh, their shared public keys to be able to look in, in um, backdoor systems. Um, so that's basically the summary here. I guess that is all impact on secure shell. So prior to the uh, section explains RSA RS public decrypt was redirected to point to the backdoor code. The trace analyzed needs to show that during the pub key login the exploit code is invoked. So uh, it's, yeah, that, that is how you backdoor. Um, that is how you basically 101, how to backdoor open SSH. Supply very, so this is so sophisticated so that's basically the summary, right? CVE 20, 24, 30, uh, 94. Um, I hope that was somewhat understandable in this high level summary. Um, I think most people currently agree, uh, probably would correct me if I'm wrong, leave your comments below. To me and most people, it looks like this is so sophisticated, like either some lone hobby person was bored and wanted to see if he can backdoor the open source Linux industry or maybe potentially more likely a state actor over put so many efforts in that over over a year a multi-year effort with potentially even a team i personally speculate larger than one because this is just too i mean you could come up with all this obfuscation and um putting it all, to, all together but most likely maybe even a team of more than one um will department potentially and that is certainly eye-opening for me, even for me, it is eye-opening 
uh, because I don't do security research and, and see such stuff on a daily basis. So it is extremely eye-opening and should have drastic consequences for open and all, not, not only open source, any source going forward, because that is basically 101 how to supply chain backdoor, uh, one of the most important components that is open SSH for um, worldwide secure shell remote login. Um, some notes, and I see there are many comments, um, maybe we later discuss them. Uh, what is so other people so this is German but as is, uh, it's just some other people's block and summary but what is noteworthy because I need to show that here to you so shout out to all of those who were involved um, the one who found this uh, which is Andre and uh, and Andres Freund and all the others uh, compiling and and all the amazing community here on our YouTube and growing to two channel we discussed this already on our Discord channel and people added links and context. Um, amazing growing community um, to be part of. So because other, other GitHub and stuff is deleted, here are some summaries. So um, a summary here is that they even, um, they even added a note. I can't show you the note anymore because GitHub took it down, right? But they post here on this blog that they even added a note because I told you in the beginning, right? They handcrafted this the main, so the payload is in GitHub in the tests, but injecting the payload is only in the manually uploaded source tables. So they even added a note there to GitHub apparently. <laughs> GitHub auto note, GitHub automatically includes two archive source code, zip and tar set in the release. These archives cannot be disabled and should be ignored because they don't have our backdoor. It's like, like, how dare they? They even said, don't use this automatically generated source code. Use our manually upload. For what reason? It's like, and I don't like this practice anyway. Um, I said this before. I mean, I always wondered like, why even add another source? Many, many projects do that. Many do that because they have auto, -conf, auto generated stuff. That is the only reason, but many have also multiple arguments and we should also really stop with this having four downloads, like why upload a G set, a B set two, a set standard, an X set, like, like do and everyone, like then if you want to hide the back door, hide it in one that Debian uses or whatnot. Plus I said this before, this ironically, the source tables, the auto generated source tables, and I shouted this out here probably a hundred times on my videos. And I said years ago already, Easily four years ago, when this first started, I said, how dare you GitHub? That is so stupid that the source tarball does not include the Git externals. The problem with that is that I can't use, I want to use the auto-generated tarballs from OBS Studio or others, but I can't in our Linux distribution because they do not include the Git external dependencies, right? Like other, they usually have two or three other sub-modules. So the irony is this auto-generated tables make sense, but nowadays with all the crazy dependencies, even I can't use it, although I would want it because I don't have the sub-modules. So thank you very much. That urgently need to change, which would be much better change than taking the GitHub repository down now. Um, also, so other things. Um, other noteworthy things here. Well, let's see what it I had here. So here was uh, some uh, design. So many people have a summary, right? This is basically everything. Um, added. So what it turns out initially, so those people, the initial author of uh, Exet, Lasse Colin, um, apparently, so I didn't follow all of this. So a lot of these details are new to me because I don't follow each development and, and gossip, but apparently this Lasse Colin, as, as he wrote, wrote himself in 2022, uh, not even two years ago, so people even pressured him. So it looks to me that if this was a sophisticated state actor attack, like let's China, Russia and stuff like that, right? Maybe even USA, who knows? But I, I would say maybe the U USA would have done it more clever, like directly poking with Red Hat or stuff. Um, but who knows? Um, it looks in the end, it is relatively sophisticated, but at the end a little bit, um, um, it's like the, the backdoor is so sophisticated yet the last minute distribution is a little bit nah. So 
maybe China after all, who knows? Um, pure, pure speculation, could be anyone, right? He could be sitting next door, I don't know. But um, what appears to me is that this team of potentially professional state actors has chosen a low-hanging fruit of project to compromise because it turns out this original author here, maintainer Lasse Colin, had some personal struggles in life. He even writes here like long-term long mental health. So I'm not making this up right. He, that is here in archive, right? Um, and obviously I wish him good luck and recovery and all the best in life. So he, because people pressured him, yeah, Jiga Kumar, progress will not happen until there's a new maintainer. So it looks to me in retrospect, like some people has have pressured this project, which was struggling, which is okay, right? It's as he writes here, Lasse writes here, um, Fox are obviously another possibility, cannot control that. Um, and it's also like some hobby project, right? Um, he, some of wrote say like, yeah, like I often say like, like do what do you want? It's a, it's a tiny, small, unsuccessful hobby project. It's like you, you get what you pay for, which is nothing, right? Um, so he wrote anyway, uh, assure you that I know far too well about the problem that not much progress has been made and so on. So one could come to the conclusion that some team was looking like have done a sophisticated supply chain analysis and came to the conclusion, hey, this project is, this, this compression project is linked in a lot of places, like system D and even kernel modules and stuff. And this person struggles a little bit, right? He doesn't have the most time. He has some mental health issues like, like we all have, right? Um, maybe some sponsor wants to sponsor those videos, right? Like, like better health stuff, not a paid advertisement yet. Um, like we all have struggle in life and find time to work on our projects. So they maybe have intentionally chosen this project to take this over because then in 2022, um, some new maintainer there of starting to send in some stuff. So maybe this really was such a sophisticated operation. And that is how in the future we need to think about security, right? Um, I have thought a lot, I've, I've done a lot, I kept a small base and review a lot of stuff, but this is the level of complexity we need to think about, right? Um, people getting in there sending like, hey, I have here some nice patches and stuff, wouldn't it be nice if I take it over, right? And then one year later, like, oops, it, it's backdoored um, professionally upstream by the new authors, right? Um, what else do we have here? So other people rep um, report apparently, um, I hope that is true, um, you never know from like, take everything with some grain of salt, right? But someone writes here very annoyingly, the apparent author of the backdoor was in communication with them over several weeks trying to get this 5.6 added to Fedora 40 and 41 because of great new features. Um, that is of course interesting, right? Like if, I mean, that, that is hearsay and adding to the story, but potentially could be true. I mean, at others, there are, um, Debian, um, there are some Debian things of hiding that between game updates or whatnot. So it looks like um, it was caught early or like one year later early um, by good luck. And had they not pressed that, like if this team of authors would not have last minute rushed it like recently. Like maybe they had something to infiltrate urgently. Like may maybe after one year they had to show, they had to have it in operation. Like they, they had some urgent target now, all those crazy war times and stuff everywhere. And, and some authoritarian regimes uh, putting their fingers into everything. Um, so maybe they needed it urgently somewhere. Um, maybe some other backdoors or bugs were fixed or whatnot and they needed to deploy that. And this last minute rush of having everything in place and then like rushing it now without refining it a little bit more to be even less discovered, we were lucky that it was due to that discovered potentially a little bit earlier than it would not have been if it would not have been as pressured and um, left another month or so to major and maybe even the backdoor refined just the slightest more to be less discovered with random vagrant errors. So um, just some surrounding data to the end of the story, right? Um, 
they even worked, so that's the crazy stuff, they even worked with him, they found, as I mentioned in the beginning, they found some random Vagrant glitches, right? And they even worked him, like after being pressured, like, hey, don't you want to ship this new version? It has some great new phages. Like, but to do it has some random Vagrant glitches. Like, oh, it's no problem. Let's work together to fix our last minimal random Vagrant issues. Like, like they even work together to, to fix the last memory corruption issues, which turned out now caused by the backdoor. They added. Um, so yeah, that's some more data points. Like this is this is adding to the very complex story of what is for me, as I said, one of maybe the I don't know. Do you leave in the comments below? Have do you remember any such sophisticated and blatant backdoor in in open source uh, ever? Leave in the comments below. So other notes here. Um, so it, as I said, it has been going on for in the making for almost a year. The whole iFunk infrastructure was added in June 2023 by Hans Jansen. And so the main author of the spectre, apparently Jan Tan. Um, you, and we can't even be sure that it's a real name, right? Um, so much to, and there were also other reports who analyzed some data because um, data, mailing list and stuff. So some, some people also added in that a lot of communications that they saw on mailing lists and Debian bugs or patch tracking and stuff were done through a VPN, right? Um, I don't have this open right now, but you can either believe me or Google that yourself. So much to, um, yeah, random names. It's, it, you can't be sure who, who Maybe this person will never be found, right? Like using a VPN or whatnot, uh, contrib like contributing. And that is why I say, and many say, sophisticated operation, right? Year-long operation working through VPNs with multiple names. This Hans Jensen, Hans Jansen, Jan Tan, and others can be the same person, can be the same department, and maybe we will never find out. They, it would not be, I mean, most likely we will have never hear from them. Like, why should they, in their open source world, like, they would probably just disappear, right? Um, why should they write, like, it was not dependent, like, it's just some test data. It's like, like no, we, we, we will most likely never hear from this. This can be some John Doe, some Jane Doe, some Hans, some, just like, who knows where they, like, are from, right? Um, the initial patch authored by Lasse Collin in the Git metadata, but even that could be doctored with, right? But the code actually came from, and it's like, yeah, I can't even open this. So like, thanks GitHub for taking it down. That is why I said in the beginning, I don't think it's the right thing to take this down. Um, maybe they should have had a banner there, like this product is backdoored and stuff and subject to current, like, because now I can't work with it. Now I would need to find another Git clone. And then I would not even have all the pull request uh, here, right? Because uh, thanks to Hans Jansen for the original patch there, it's like, yeah, thanks, I can't review this now anymore because that somehow, it's like, no, that sucks. Um, so yeah, there, there were a ton of patches by these two, two or maybe not two, maybe one, maybe two, maybe whole department, who knows, right? Because the iPhone code was breaking with all sorts of build options and obviously caused many problems with various sanitizers. Subsequently, the configure script was modified multiple times to detect the use of sanitizers about, and that is like, they even modified the configure script to detect sanitizers because they find too many of all memory corruption. It's like bugs and clobbering. Abort build unless either the sanitizer was disabled or the use of iPhones was disabled. This uh, would mask the payload in many testing and debugging environments. The Hans Jans 162 GitHub account was created in 2023, and the only thing they did was add this code to libLZMA. The same name later applied to do an NMUA, whatever that. It's like, don't use abbreviations, right? I, I don't know, whatever. Non, maybe update, non, maybe non major update or whatnot. It could stand like don't use bloody abbreviation. That's like maybe non major update. Debian um, for the vulnerable version. Um, 
the account which only appeared here once then pops up ask for the vulnerable version to be imported right which i i hear that so like here um crazy right bug here debian bug new upstream version like uh, very much not a fan of like non match up who are i don't know and 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 leave the console doing large changes such as new upstream version instead of having, uh, what was it here um like Grigorin 4545 i don't know yeah i mean you you cannot from the name i mean if it's china russia or iran or who knows usa uk um probably the german intelligence services to incompetent <laughs> but um the name i mean professional people could even use names to blame it to others right like it's not like the name is like that it's the russians the name is like it's the chinese like like obviously a professional team chooses names to obfuscate as the, the most as possible right um extra wagon output causes some it's like it's like extra vagrant output causes some failed tests for them looks like the new version will like hey the new version is better backdoor can you please pull it in quickly we we have some things to hack or so absolutely mind-blowingly crazy um some people point out they even contributed to the linux kernel so um the linux kernel code should be reviewed and last but not least because that is here right that is um here of jan tan of yeah, lot 0218 gmail uh, x set embedded so they did not even do that but also x set embedded this upstream project switched uh, there of whatnot um, and so this backdoor was um, i would say one of the most sophisticated but in the end it was a relatively um, obvious backdoor um, so while we should watch out for such obfuscated stuff i would say so this is of course not the only way you can do backdoors and that is not even the best way to do backdoors because i would argue after a year-long effort it was found relatively quickly an even way better way to do backdoors to teach you one last thing and i hope you learned something with all those new shout outs here is actually to do backdoors purely due to bugs in the C, C++ Rust code, right? Obviously, Rust code does not necessarily need to be backdoor free, right? Like if you write memory safe code, I said this before, if you program logic errors in Rust, you can, of course, implement bugs and bugs and backdoors in, in Rust just as easily, right? And an even much more sophisticated backdoor would be to not do this binary injection here, but simply write well-formed, good and secure-looking C, C++, Rust, whatever you fancy, Zig, Swift code that has a backdoor that needs to, that sets some hidden bits somewhere, right? You can probably imagine, right? The possibilities are endless. So that some kind of trigger mechanism is causing bugs or intentional bugs and then we have seen such things uh, before, right? Logic bugs and some overwritten memory and stuff. So that the, you don't have this, it needs to be specially injected here, but it works not only on any distribution, even then potentially T2 and not only Debian and Red Hat, but also on other CPU architectures, right? Because that is obviously only working on x86-64. If you hide this in true source code plain sight like they have not done here then it also work, potentially works on all other compatible cpu architectures that have a similar similar memory layout or of course you can you don't need to misuse uh, out of bounds memory access you can hide logic bugs directly so that it is even not causing memory issue, issues and yet uh, allowing you some trigger mechanism um, to lock in with your specific bits and keys said um it is amazing so yeah that's basically the story i hope i did not forget any um important detail we have the most people uh, logging in uh, ever that is amazing uh, the problem is i see a very many comments um the problem is it is um which is totally amazing um that you have this discussion and edit this the problem is if i discuss them over 20 minutes i make this youtube video less popular so um let's go over to twitch and um go over the comments just to optimize here the youtube views of this otherwise too long video 
And thank you again for tuning in, for sharing, liking, and subscribing. And um, yeah, I, I, I will discuss, um, we just need to become more clever here, right? So I will discuss this uh, then on Twitch to optimize this and uh, allow the YouTube algorithm to better uh, shout out our video. And I see you here on Twitch in five minutes to go over through all the additional uh, comments.